What's up, Trainiacs? Welcome to this week's Triathlon Newsday Tuesday, where in this week's edition of Triathlon Newsday, we've got a really good one. History is about to be set at the Half Ironman World Championships. Really well-known companies in our industry are shuffling around, restructuring, maybe going through some challenges, and triathlete gets announced that they publicly get named for doping. Ooh, this'll be good. What's up triathletes? Welcome to this week's Triathlon News Day Tuesday where every single Tuesday, as long as I'm not traveling and there is news to talk about, we go over what's happened over the previous week in the sport that we love of triathlon. As always, make sure you stick around to the end where we share everyone's favorite part of Triathlon Newsday Tuesday, and it is a good one this week. As was said when we read this story originally, I'm not crying, you're crying. And as always, full links to what we talk about will be in the description below when appropriate. Let's start off with the Half Ironman World Championships that is coming up this weekend in Nice, France. Now this is going to be one of the biggest half Ironmans that's ever been held, particularly for world championships. Now, Ironman announced that they expect that the area of Nice, France and the surrounding communities are going to benefit to the tune of 22 million euros in the week leading up to the event and after. And that's in hotels, that's in restaurants, that's in just general travel there, people being around. And that's not just from the four to 5,000 athletes that are going to be there. They are expecting 20,000 athletes, spectators, family, friends that are going to become a part of the event in one way, shape, or form. Now, this is huge. What I have heard over the previous year is that the event itself has been the number one uptake world championship for a half Ironman that there's ever been. So basically there's a tracker that Ironman uses that if a person gets offered a spot at an event, do they take it? And the percentage of athletes that took spots to Nice, France is greater than it's ever been. So very big event, nice area, makes sense that lots and lots of people are going to go there. Lots and lots of euros are going to be spent. Related to that, in Nice, France, the Von Berg family is going to be making history. Rudy Von Berg, pro triathlete, one of the favorites was on the podcast, as his family lived just 45 minutes from the course. Now, where the history comes in is that it's not just Rudy that's going to be competing in the event. He'll also be competing with his sister, Olympia Von Berg. He'll also be competing with, I believe it's an older brother, Maximilian Von Berg. They will also be competing with their dad, nine-time age group world champion, Rudolf Von Berg, all over the course of those two days, and they're all a bunch of studs in the triathlon sport. Like, my goodness, those jeans. I'm sorry, mom and dad, but you guys gave me curling jeans. You get, I'm, I'm, I am basically like 60% Scottish. I'm short, I'm muscular. I am built for caber tossing, not endurance sports. It's a good thing that I'm trying to make a living in the endurance sports world. Anyway, good luck to Rudy, Olympia, Maximilian, Rudolph. You guys have awesome names, you're awesome triathletes, and I hope you have a fun time this weekend. Good luck. Saris, otherwise you might know as Cyclops, announced the H3 Smart Trainer. We, now we have tried and ridden on and reviewed the Cyclops Hammer, originally their top of the line smart trainer that competed with the Wahoo Kicker. We also reviewed the Cyclops H2, their kind of a very small refinement, almost indistinguishable from the original Hammer. Well, the H3 is a bit of a, yeah, same sort of thing, just slightly better. The big thing about the H3 is that it is basically silent. They report about 59 decibels, which is 
probably quieter than me talking right now. I think I'm at about 70 decibels. So it's basically a silent trainer and it is less expensive. So if you don't need the Wahoo ecosystem of the fan, of the climb, and you want one of the best trainers out there, the Cyclops H3, wait a minute, that's not right. I'll get to that in a second. The H3 is going to be a less expensive and excellent option for you. Now, the let's get to that in a second is that Cyclops is no more. Everything is now brought under the Ceres brand name. Ceres was the company that owned Cyclops, that owned PowerTap, that made the bike racks that you see on a lot of cars out in North America. And they have since sold off PowerTap to SRAM. They have basically done away with Cyclops and renamed everything under the Ceres brand. Not surprising at all because of all the restructuring with PowerTap being sold off to SRAM, with a bunch of layoffs that I know about. So they're going through some growing pains at the moment or maybe some shrinking pains. Anyway, as we know, it's a tough time in our industry. Hopefully they come through with this because of like their products. And Iron Man announced that another age grouper has tested positive for a banned substance. One, Antonio Gomez Gonzalez, who competes in the 25 to 29 age category, has tested positive for clenbuterol, which is essentially an anabolic, somewhat related to steroids kind of substance. What is going to happen is over the next four years, he is no longer eligible to compete in any WADA sanctioned events. And the results that he had at Half Ironman Marbella and the overall age group win that he had at Ironman Malaysia, which is where he qualified for Kona, are now voided. So he's not gonna get to go to Kona. He is not going to be able to compete in any Ironman events for the next four years. Now, what's really, really, really interesting about all this is why this came about is from a tip-off to Iron Man. It's been reported that the Spanish National Doping Agency actually kind of informed Iron Man that this was an athlete that they might want to look at. He's previously tested positive and been banned before. So this is good to see that Iron Man is cracking down on this because frankly, I've said it before, in my opinion, Looking at the differences in just body types from athletes in 2013 to athletes in 2018 at the World Championships, we're talking about like wispy thin, stick, skeleton, emaciated looking athletes back in 2013 to bodybuilding gorillas competing now. And I have to think that that has something to do with doping or maybe the prevalence of low testosterone clinics all around North America now. So I think it's good that Iron Man is taking things more seriously. Now let's get into some results. There wasn't a ton of racing action all around the world as ITU is winding down and Iron Man is focusing on half Iron Man worlds. But the big race this weekend was that the ITU grand final in Lausanne, Switzerland, where the race would be held that would be one of the WTS, the big series of ITU short course distance racing would happen. And at the end of that, an overall world champion would be crowned, which is calculated over the course of accumulating points throughout the entire racing season. After receiving 23 stitches, in her mouth just a few weeks ago, Katie Zafiris ended up winning in Lucerne and becoming the overall world champion. On the men's side, Christian Blumenfeld won the event in a crushing 16 second gap. Now you might say 16 seconds, it's not crushing, but when that gap is trying to be run down by Mario Mola, who is one of the best runners in our sport, 16 seconds is pretty huge, so congratulations to him, but a big congratulations also goes out to Vincent Louis, who won the overall world championship on the men's side. And there was only one race on the Ironman circuit that was 70.3 Zellam C in Switzerland, which was won by Thomas Steger and Daniela Blamel. Quick update on the Triathlon Terran podcast. We had a dilly of a pickle of an episode just published couple of days ago and it was what a pro triathlete eats in a day with 
pro triathlete Sarah Piampiano, her second time on the podcast, and we brought on a guest, her nutrition expert that she's been working with over a couple of years. And what you can see looking back at Sarah's performances, she has developed a real consistency in her performances. In the last two years, she's been either on the podium or winning just about every single event that she's gone into. And we get into pretty, pretty much exactly what she eats in a day. And it's taken, I think, a year and a half for us to actually line up this interview because for the longest time, Sarah and the nutritionist Scott weren't sure how much, if any, of what they were doing they wanted to share. Now they are. So that's really cool. And this week we are recording two very interesting podcasts. One with the founder of Precision Hydration to talk about not just nutrition, but now fluid intake and big podcast. This is going to be lots of fun. Nick Bear, the weightlifter, the bodybuilder, the crossfitter, the founder of BPN Supplements. He is going to be on the podcast. We've been coaching him on teamtrainiac.com. He's been going through it, blogging. He's a big YouTuber. Go check out his channel, Nick Bear. And we're going to get him on the podcast and uh, largely have a call with him, see how his training has been going and what big dudes, big people, people that are coming from a weightlifting background, what they can learn from Nick. Now, let's get into the Trainiac story of this week and I am gonna do my best not to tear up. And if I tear up, I'm not actually tearing up, there's something in my eyes and it goes, hi Taryn, Kayla here. Kayla is an awesome member of Team Trainiac, so I, this is near and dear to my heart. I don't think my story is anything too crazy, but my friends and family say that my story is inspirational and worth sharing. So here it is. Two years ago, I was in the ER on suicide watch. I struggled with depression and anxiety ever since I was in elementary school and I was unable to take any medications for it because for whatever reason, the chemicals in my brain just don't jive with medicine. I had some extremely dark days growing up, but this particular day two years ago was the darkest day of my adult life. My third son had just turned a year old and I was still struggling with postpartum depression on top of my normal depression and anxiety. I was done, I just couldn't do life anymore. Having spent so many years trying to fill a void in my heart with so many things, I thought I would never get better and everyone's life would be better without me. My husband ended up bringing me to the ER because my mental state got so bad and as I laid in that hospital bed completely numb and void of any emotion, I thought to myself, when I get out of here, I am going to train for a triathlon. Besides teaching some yoga, I've never been an active person, so I have no idea why that thought came into my mind, but it did. I trained so hard that I actually ended up overtraining for my first Olympic distance triathlon, but I finished. I was the last one that had their picture taken by the photographer and the second to last person across the finish line before the cutoff. But for the first time in so long, I felt something good. I cried crossing the finish line because I felt alive. I did a sprint a couple of months after that race, then joined Team Trainiac as soon as it was launched. I didn't overtrain this season and took 32 minutes off my Olympic time. And I finished my first 70.3 in six hours, 41 minutes. I'm not exactly sure how triathlon saved my life, but it did. My friends and family remind me constantly, thanks for reading my story. I really don't know if I have anything else to say to that. Thank you for sharing your story. That is awesome. That, that gets me right here and I want more good things for you. So thanks for being on Team Trainiac and thank you for sharing this, Kayla. That's awesome. If anyone else wants to get their story shared here on Triathlon Newsday, it doesn't have to be such a get me right in the here's kind of story like Kayla, but anything that you have, that you found triathlon has helped change your life, email us at taren at triathlonterran.com. Include some race photos because triathlon saves lives, people. And if you like Triathlon Newsday Tuesday and you aren't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. Trainiacs, I'm not crying, you're crying.